Welcome to day 109 of our Bible reading plan. Today we're reading Numbers chapter 19, Amos chapter 1, Amos chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 3, Matthew chapter 5, verse 33 to verse 48, Romans chapter 3, verse 9 to verse 20, and Psalms chapter 109. We're reading from the Berean Standard Bible. Numbers chapter 19. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, This is the statute of the law that the Lord has commanded. Instruct the Israelites to bring you an unblemished red heifer that has no defect and has never been placed under a yoke. Give it to Eleazar the priest and he will have it brought outside the camp and slaughtered in his presence. Eleazar the priest is to take some of its blood on his finger and sprinkle it seven times towards the front of the tent of meeting. Then the heifer must be burned in his sight. Its hide, its flesh, and its blood are to be burned, along with its dung. The priest is to take cedar wood, isop, and scarlet wool, and throw them onto the burning heifer. Then the priest must wash his clothes and bath his body in water. After that, he may enter the camp but it will be ceremonially unclean until evening. The one who burned the heifer must also wash his clothes and bath his body in water, and he too will be ceremonially unclean until evening. Then a man who is ceremonially clean is to gather up the ashes of the heifer and store them in a ceremonially clean place outside the camp. They must be kept by the congregation of Israel for preparing the water of purification. This is for purification from sin. The man who has gathered up the ashes of the heifer must also wash his clothes and he will be ceremonially unclean until evening. This is a permanent statute for the Israelites and for the foreigner residing among them. Whoever touches any dead body will be unclean for seven days. He must purify himself with the water on the third day, and on the seventh day, then he will be clean. But if he does not purify himself on the third and seventh days, he will not be clean. Anyone who touches a human corpse and fails to purify himself defiles the tabernacle of the Lord. That person must be cut off from Israel. He remains unclean because the water of purification has not been sprinkled on him, and his uncleanness is still on him. This is the law when a person dies in a tent. Everyone who enters the tent and everyone who is already in the tent will be unclean for seven days. And any open container without a lid fasting on heat is unclean. Anyone in the open field who touches someone who has been killed by the sword or has died of natural causes or anyone who touches a human bone or a grave will be unclean for seven days. For the purification of the unclean person, take some of the ashes of the burnt sin offering, put them in a jar, and pour fresh water over them. Then a man who is ceremonially clean is to take some high soap, dip it in the water, and sprinkle the tent, all the furnishings, and the people who were there. He is also to sprinkle the one who touched a bone, a grave, or a person who has died or been slain. The man who is ceremonially clean is to sprinkle the unclean person on the third day and on the seventh day. After he purifies the unclean person on the seventh day, the one being cleansed must wash his clothes and bath in water, and that evening he will be clean. But if a person who is unclean does not purify himself, he will be cut off from the assembly because he has defiled the sanctuary of the Lord. The water of purification has not been sprinkled on him. He is unclean. This is a permanent statute for the people. The one who sprinkles the water of purification must wash his clothes. And whoever touches the water of purification will be unclean until evening. Anything the unclean person touches will become unclean. And anyone who touches it will be unclean until evening. Now read Amos chapter 1. These are the words of Amos, who was among the shepherders of Tekwa, what he saw concerning Israel two years before the earthquake, in the days when Uzziah was king of Judah, and Jeroboam son of Jehoash was king of Israel. He said, 
The Lord roars from Zion and raises his voice from Jerusalem. The pastures of the shepherds mourn, and the summit of Carmel withers. This is what the Lord says. For three transgressions of Damascus, even four, I will not revoke my judgment, because they threshed Gilead with sledges of iron. So I will send fire upon the house of Azahel to consume the citadels of Ben-Hadad. I will break down the gates of Damascus. I will cut off the ruler of the valley of Havon and the one who wields the scepter in Beth Eden. The people of Aram will be exiled to Kir, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. For three transgressions of Gaza, even for I will not revoke my judgment. Because they exiled a whole population, delivering them up to Edom. So I will send fire upon the walls of Gaza to consume its citadels. I will cut off the ruler of Ashdod and the one who wields the scepter in Ashkelon. I will turn my hand against Ekron and the remnant of the Philistines will perish, says the Lord God. This is what the Lord says. For three transgressions of Tyre, even four, I will not revoke my judgment. Because they delivered up a whole congregation of exiles to Edom and broke a covenant of brotherhood. So I will send fire upon the walls of Tyre to consume its citadels. This is what the Lord says. For three transgressions of Edom, even four, I will not revoke my judgment. Because he pursued his brother with the sword and stifled all compassion. His anger raged continually and his fury flamed incessantly. So I will send fire upon Teman to consume the citadels of Bozra. This is what the Lord says. For three transgressions of the Harmonites, even four, I will not revoke my judgment, because they ripped open the pregnant women of Gilead in order to enlarge their territory. So I will kindle a fire in the walls of Rabbah to consume its citadels amid war cries on the day of battle and a violent wind on the day of tempest. Their king will go into exile, he and his princes together, says the Lord. Amos chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 3. This is what the Lord says, For three transgressions of Moab, even four, I will not revoke my judgment, because it burned to lime the bones of Edom's king. So I will send fire against Moab to consume the citadels of Kerioth, Moab will die in tumult amid war cries and the sound of the ram's horn. I will cut off the ruler of Moab and kill all the officials with him, says the Lord. Our next reading is Matthew chapter 5, verse 33 to verse 48. Again, you have heard that it was said to the ancients, Do not break your oath, but fulfill your vows to the Lord. But I tell you not to swear at all either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor should you swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Simply let your yes be yes, and your no, no. Anything more comes from the evil one. You have heard that it was said, high for high and tooth for tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who has you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Do not even tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now we read Romans chapter 3, verse 9 to verse 20. What then? Are we any better? Not at all. For we have already made the charge that Jews and Greeks alike are all on their sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. 
There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The venom of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery lie in their wake, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be justified in his sight by works of the law, for the law merely brings awareness of sin. Now we're going to read the last passage for today, the book of Psalms, chapter 109. O God of my praise, be not silent, for wicked and deceitful mouths open against me. They speak against me with lying tongues. They surround me with hateful words and attack me without cause. In return for my love, they accuse me, but I am a man of prayer. They repay me evil for good and hatred for my love. Set over him a wicked man. Let an accuser stand at his right hand. When he is tried, let him be found guilty. And may his prayer be regarded as sin. May his days be few. May another take his position. May his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. May his children wander as beggars, seeking sustenance far from their ruined homes. May the creditor seize all he owns and strangers plunder the fruits of his labor. May there be no one to extend kindness to him, and no one to favor his fatherless children. May his descendants be cut off. May their name be blotted out from the next generation. May the iniquity of his fathers be remembered before the Lord, and the sin of his mother never be blotted out. May their sins always remain before the Lord, that he may cut off their memory from the earth. For he never thought to show kindness, but pursued the poor and needy and broken-hearted, even to their death. The cursing that he loved, may it fall on him. The blessing in which he refused to delight, may it be far from him. The cursing that he wore like a coat, may it soak into his body like water and into his bones like oil. May it be like a robe wrapped about him, like a belt tied forever around him. May this be the Lord's reward to my accusers, to those who speak evil against me. But you, O God, the Lord, deal kindly with me for the sake of your name. Deliver me by the goodness of your loving devotion. For I am poor and needy. My heart is wounded within me. I am fading away like a lengthening shadow. I am shaken off like a locust. My knees are weak from fasting, and my body grows lean and gaunt. I am an object of scorn to my accusers. When they see me, they shake their heads. Help me, O Lord, my God. Save me according to your loving devotion. Let them know that this is your hand, that you, O Lord, have done it. Though they curse, you will bless. When they rise up, they will be put to shame, but your servant will rejoice. May my accusers be clothed with disgrace. May they wear their shame like a robe. With my mouth, I will thank the Lord profusely. I will praise him in the presence of many, for he stands at the right hand of the needy one to save him from the condemners of his soul. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing and doing of his word in Jesus' name. I pray that the word will find place in our hearts and bring forth fruit in 30-fold, 60-fold, and a 100-fold in Jesus' name. Amen.